Happy Halloween, everybody. Ha! You thought I'd make a holiday-related video on time for once, didn't you? Well, spooky month is almost over, which gives me a great chance to talk about the one record in my collection that is definitely Halloween-related. Aside from my 45 single of the Monster Mash. And that record is my Mondo double album of the Castlevania Symphony of the Night soundtrack. Because what is a man but a miserable little pile of records? Here we have the vinyl collector set of the classic Castlevania game Symphony of the Night, as released by the incomparable Mondo Records. If you know anything about Mondo, it's that they put out really high quality collector sets of movie soundtracks and other music. This album is no exception. The cover is beautifully decorated in original artwork from artist Jasmine Darnell, who's done a wonderful job capturing the spirit of the original game's art. There's Alucard on the front, looking more baby-faced than usual. I guess sleeping in a coffin for 300 years is good for the complexion. And on the back, we have Big Daddy Dracula himself, looking out from the inverted castle, as dour as usual. On the inside, there's more bust portraits of Maria and Richter, and even Vampire Killer makes an appearance, though it just seems to be floating around Richter's head for some reason. And I've also put the Obi strip in here that was originally on the outside of the cover. Now I've seen artwork from several Mondo releases over the years, but this was my first time looking at a physical copy in person, and I must say it looks as impressive as I expected. But the real feature item here is of course the records themselves. Taking out the sleeves, we can see, excuse me, that the soundtrack has been pressed onto two blood red vinyl discs. Now as usual, Mondo also pressed this album onto other colors of vinyl as well, but come on, this is Castlevania. If you have the option of getting it in red, you gotta get the red. Let's drop the needle. It's clear right away that Mondo takes their record pressing as seriously as their artwork. These sturdy, heavy discs have barely any detectable surface noise or sibilance. It lets the music come through and immerse you in the world of the game. And what a world it is. Out of all the Castlevania soundtracks I've heard, I personally think Symphony of the Night has the most compelling music. The other Castlevania games have stellar soundtracks to be sure. But there's just something about Symphony of the Night's music that just does it for me. There's a great fusion here of period 18th century and 80s and 90s synth aesthetics of the period when the game was released. For example, check out the juxtaposition between Prayer and Dracula's Castle. standout tracks spread out across these two discs. My favorites are Moonlight Nocturne, Dance of Gold, Crystal Teardrop, and The Tragic Prince. Interestingly, the game doesn't include its own version of Bloody Tears, but we do get a taste of it on Blood Relations. And fortunately, the bonus tracks on side 4 give us two different remixes of the legendary song itself. Now, I was a bit apprehensive about getting the music to a late 90s PlayStation 1 game on vinyl. Would it just sound compressed and tinny? Well, fortunately, James Plotkin, who did the remastering specifically for this record, has done a beautiful job of rendering these tracks as dynamic and uncompressed soundscapes. They're not always as vibrant sounding and lifelike as I thought they could be, but I think that's down to their origins as 16-bit compressed backgrounds to a CD-sized game. There are many places, though, where I was impressed with the quality of the instrumentation, such as the delicate chimes and percussion on Nocturne. On other places, though, I felt the arrangements could have been better. 
in particular Crystal Teardrop. Crystal Teardrop is special to me because it's one of the first Castlevania songs I actually listened to in depth when I found a live cover of it on YouTube. And I was really blown away. This is actually what inspired me to start listening to Castlevania soundtracks. On this release though, there's something about the electronic drums that just seem off. The rest of the instruments are great, but the percussion just seems flat and pushed too far into the background. I found myself wishing that they'd mixed it with just a bit more punch. I mean, come on, how can the harpsichord be so clear and convincing, but the drums just seem so dull? Well, okay. There are a few other moments like this on the record, but honestly, they're never bad enough to take you out of the experience of the music. This is an album I can immerse myself in, especially when I'm doing something else. Because let's face it, everything feels more epic when you have monster hunting music accompanying you. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any to mention that I'm kind of a newcomer to the Castlevania franchise. Of course, I knew about the games growing up, but I was a bit too young for Symphony of the Night when it first came out in 1999. Actually, my real introduction to the franchise happened about a year ago when a friend recommended the Castlevania Netflix series to me. And oh boy, I quickly got caught up in this crap sack world of complicated characters and battles against demons. It turns out that the show is darker and bloodier than most of the games themselves, but it absolutely succeeds at making you sympathize with just about every character who comes across the screen and it manages to build its world slowly while also maintaining just the right amount of action. So right after I'd finished the series, and oh boy did it leave me with some feels, I went looking for the soundtrack to the show by Trevor Morris, and it is absolutely brilliant. It's subtle and effective, and its dark synths give off some serious John Carpenter vibes. And that's what led me here buying gamer records about vampires and wall poultry. So, to sum up, this is a terrific release, both sonically and as a visual art piece. This is my first go-around with Mondo Records, and I must say I'm impressed with their quality. Now here's the thing. I was hoping to time this video to come out with the announcement of Castlevania Season 3 on Netflix, but as of this recording, that hasn't happened yet. So I can only assume that Dracula's curse is preventing Powerhouse Animation from finishing the season. So all I'll say at this time is that I hope a Belmont can get down to Austin so that the crew can be liberated and finally release those episodes. And in the meantime, Netflix, please, please, please release Trevor Morris's soundtrack to Castlevania Season 2. It doesn't have to be a physical release, but I gotta hear it somewhere. Anyway. That's my episode for this All Hallows' Eve. Stay safe out there, thank you for watching, and uh, if you go out trick-or-treating, don't dress all in black. If you liked this video, consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up, and perhaps tipping me on my coffee page. Or if you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down and tell me why in the comments. Have a great one!